Hi, Mike here with Dog TV Adventures. Well, this is part two of my backpacking series, and uh, I'm going to go over now a little bit about uh, some of the things you need to bring when you're backpacking and some thoughts about uh, the gear. Um, <clears throat> obviously, one of the most uh, crucial things that you need when you're backpacking is a backpack. So, um, there's different styles of backpack. This is what is called an external frame. You can see the frame here, that's why it's external. Um, and they make internal frame packs which have become rapidly popular um, in the last uh, probably 10 years. Um, it used to be I could find external frames everywhere and now it's harder and harder to find them. And um, so as you can imagine, uh, I really like external frame packs and I think that uh, internal frame packs are, you know, crazy stupid. But that's just me, it's pre per personal preference. There's some advantages and disadvantages to both types of packs, um, but um, generally speaking, uh, either one will work. Um, this pack is um, many years old. It's probably pushing 20 years now, and uh, it's starting to wear out, and I'm probably going to have to look around for another one. Um, but uh, basically, you need a pack to carry your, your gear, and uh, when you're off for day hikes, you know we usually go in, we travel, we drop our packs, um, we maybe travel again, drop our packs, and then we'll stay a couple nights. And then during that couple nights stay, we'll do some day hikes around the area. Whenever you leave your camp, um, one of the biggest mistakes you can make as a newbie backpacker is to walk away from your pack carrying nothing. Um, that's the stupidest thing and it's going to get you into trouble. When you go out for a day hike, you got to take stuff with you. Some of the things you're going to be taking with you are going to be um, a jacket, a knife, matches, headlamp, Etc. If you don't carry some basic stuff with you, your first aid kit, um, and something happens when you're out day hiking, you're going to be in big trouble. So especially if you have to spend the night, um, if you can't make it back to camp and you don't have matches to make a fire, uh, you don't have a jacket. And uh, one of the things I also want to mention is this series is specifically covering uh, High Sierra um, uh, hiking and backpacking because that's mostly what I do. So different areas you're going to have some other considerations, but um, I'm going to focus mostly on uh, the high Sierras. Um, mountains make their own weather. Weather can change rapidly. You walk away from your camp without a jacket for a few hour day hike um, and it can go from 90 degrees, you're sweating, you're in a t-shirt, to hypothermic temperatures in about two hours. So, and if you can't get back to your camp before you're in, uh, you know, hypothermia, then you're in big trouble. So, uh, never leave your camp without some basic stuff. Well, how do you leave your camp with, with uh, out carrying this big behemoth backpack? Uh, well, one of the features of this particular pack is um, this pack pouch on the back actually unzips, and. Um, and it has another waist strap here and it straps on like a butt pack. Um, I really like this feature, um, not that many uh, packs nowadays have it, but uh, that's one way to get off without carrying your entire pack around with you when you're, when you're off doing stuff. The other thing that we do is uh, we have, let me grab one of them, it's right here. We have these day packs. Now, when you're backpacking, you're trying to save weight on everything, so carrying a day pack, especially something big and bulky like this, is going to be um, just prohibitively heavy. So what we did is we went and found the cheapest, thinnest, junkiest day pack you can find, which is this right here. And um, what we do is instead of using our stuff sack for our sleeping bag, is we actually leave the stuff sack at home and we stuff our sleeping bags into these and then strap these onto our pack instead. So they dual as our stuff sack and as our day pack. So when we go out on a day pack, it's got a slot for uh, a water bladder and you can throw your first aid kit and your jacket and so forth in there. And that way you won't get into trouble going out on a day hike. So those are the kind of things. You don't have to have a day pack like this. You can use a little butt pack um, that might come with your backpack or you might find something small, thin that can carry some basic items and you can usually pack a lot into one of these things so you don't need something huge but you don't want to leave camp without a knife, you don't want to leave camp without matches, you don't want to leave camp without a light, some sort of a headlamp. Um, I highly recommend headlamps, not flashlights um, because in the event you injure yourself 
and you need to work on something, you need your hands free. So if you're taping up your leg or something like that, you want to be able to look and work at the same time. So headlamps over, uh, over flashlights. Um, but, uh, you know, there's lots of good backpacks out there. The best thing to do is go out and try them, um, feel how they, they fit. Most backpacking stores will have sandbag weights. You can fill it up, put some weight on it and you can get somebody to help you adjust it while you're in the store. And, uh, some stores like REI, they have people that are at least reasonably decent at adjusting it. Other stores, you might end up with somebody who knows less than you. It's hard to tell, but um, anyway, you should feel comfortable in the pack. You should get at least half the weight onto your hips um, so that your shoulders are not carrying a lot of the weight, and so it needs to be properly adjusted and, and fit for you. Um, and also they make different size backpacks and so obviously a, a tiny woman like Andra who um, is only five foot one and um, doesn't weigh a lot, if she had a big backpack like this it's not going to fit her no matter what you do. So you want to look for a pack that's appropriately sized and I think they, they make women uh, specific packs also that are slightly different for uh, women versus men. So. That really, that covers the backpack, so I mean, it's one of your major um, functional items that you need to pick up. Like I said, I prefer the external frame pack um, because you can strap stuff underneath it onto the frame and on top of it if necessary. Uh, with an internal frame uh, pack, not only are they hotter because they hug your body with the material and the external frame holds it away from you so it breathes a little bit better. Um, but um, you got to stuff everything inside of it, your sleeping bag, and, and I mean, you just run out of room really fast in an internal frame pack unless you're not a backpacker. You go in for one night or two nights, like I said, which is what most people do. That's not backpacking, that's just a silly overnight. So if you, um, you like, you know, internal frame packs, they are more stable, they're not as tippy, uh, that kind of thing, external frame packs. They're going to shift more on you, so if you're in bad terrain, you're going to have to be more careful about being stable. But like I said, there's pros and cons. I prefer the external. Um, it's really per personal preference, but um, uh, you just need to look into it and see what works for you. And uh, I would have something for a day pack. You don't have to have something like this, but even a butt pack that can carry some basic stuff with you. Um, one of the things I mentioned is jackets. Um, in the high Sierras, like I said, the weather can change rapidly even during the summer, especially during the summer. People go out there all the time and get caught in thunderstorms, hailstorms. Um, so you need to have a jacket when you leave camp uh, for any extended period of time. If you're walking five minutes down to get some water and back, you don't have to carry stuff with you. But if you're going for a day hike, you better take your jacket with you and some of those other things I mentioned. Um, this is a really good rain jacket. You'll notice it's black on the outside and it's got like a plasticized inside. The water cannot go through this. Um, there's a lot of jackets that are for rain and the water will soak right through them. Don't get those. Um, when you're backpacking and you're in bad weather conditions, the worst thing that can happen is you get wet um, because you're gonna start feeling uh, cold and miserable. Um, the other type of jacket I would highly recommend is a down jacket. Um, this jacket is very warm. Um, I've worn it down into the uh, uh, single digits and especially layered up, it's it's perfectly warm and adequate for me. Um, if you're if you run cold, uh, especially women who tend to run colder than men, um, you might want something a little bit thicker than this. But the nice thing about down is it's light and it packs down to an incredibly tiny size. So you can squish it into your pack and it'll take up very little room. Um, and so those two types of jackets would be uh, you know highly recommended. Um, this jacket is not really. Uh, as necessary in the summer months as it is in uh, fall and spring. Um, in the summer, you might be able to get away with a synthetic sweater or sweatshirt, um, and so you layer up underneath your rain jacket. You're always gonna take this no matter what it is. It could be 90 degrees out, you leave without a rain jacket um, that, um, and it also works, of course, as a windbreaker, and you're in the high Sierras, you're gonna be, you're gonna be in trouble. So, the other thing that, um, uh, you need to have obviously is uh, you know waterproof matches, lighter, uh, something to start fires. I like uh, tire tubes because I'm a cyclist. Um, they burn even when they're wet, so uh, obviously you want to dry them off before you light them. But once they get going, they'll still burn and burn even in the rain. And you can get your fire started. You can use dryer lint. Um, everybody's got dryer lint. Um, any type of material that would help you get a fire started under adverse conditions. Under normal conditions, you can get a fire without any of that stuff. But a little bit of fire starting material 
Um, when the, the conditions are bad, it's windy, raining, hailing, snowing, um, it's going to make things a lot easier for you. 